Hello everyone, I am here today with my most expansive effects chain to date by far. This is a video specifically focused on effects pedals for synths, and I'm doing this in collaboration with Delicious Audio, one of the, if not the biggest, uh, effects pedal blog on the internet. And I'll be doing a bunch of these over the next few months, so consider this like an introduction to the series. There will of course be playing examples here as well, but a big part of this video is just explaining the best and most efficient approach to using effects pedals along with your synth gear. We'll be looking into topics such as, why are guitar pedals an awesome creative tool when used with synths? How should you set up and power your pedals? What can pedals do? And this is where we'll get more specific and where the playing examples will come in. Stereo versus mono. Effect order. Audio routing and also looking into pedals that are marked studio grade versus the ones that are not. And having an understanding over levels. And we'll be featuring everything here in some way in the process. I know that there's a lot of gear here. If you'd like to jump to any topic specifically, those are linked in the description of this video. There's also affiliate links for everything in this video. So yes, a lot of affiliate links. If you're on the fence and maybe wanting to purchase any gear from this video, please do use those links that help this channel a lot. And if you're in the US, consider using Sweetwater. They have absolutely everything that you need as a synthesis or effects pedal user. Here is a rundown of the effects pedals that we're gonna be taking a look at today, sitting on this gorgeous rack. It's the Pedal Train XD18 rack. And starting up top, we have the Voodoo Lab Pedal Power 3. So everything is being powered through this unit here. Usually this is actually placed underneath the rack, but you know, for the purpose of this video, I wanted to show everything that I'm using. We've got the Boss Slicer SL to the Red Panda Particle, the Maris LVX, Eventide Triceracorus, love that name, the Mighty Eventide H90 Harmonizer, as well as the Strymon Night Sky. And all of these sounds will be coming from the Novation Circuit Rhythm. Funny enough, the Circuit Rhythm actually also has some onboard effects right here. So if you go over to the effects uh, page right here, you could actually choose which type of reverb and delay you want to use on any given track. And up here, you could actually mix it on a specific track. So I'll head over to this project, effects. Right, so I just chose to add delay to these drums, to that bass as well, to the perk. And you could change the type of delay as well. And same goes for reverb. So if I just choose a reverb, add a ton of that to drums. So it works in the same way. But when you've got like an external entire chain like this, obviously you're entering into some new territory. Mind you, you can't zero in on specific um, instruments or tracks within whatever unit you're using. This is like a master effects chain, obviously. Unless of course you're using a bigger setup and maybe routing this as like an effects send to individual instruments more gear involved there. So many different ways of routing your effects. This video is all about effects. And the video is also sponsored by DistroKid. If you're looking for a way to officially distribute your music and you don't wanna to pay too much to do it, DistroKid is your best option. We'll be getting into reasons why later in this video. And so let's get started. Why are guitar pedals an awesome creative tool when used with synths? In many cases, there's like a new carved out market for that exact thing, for that for that niche. A great example of this is the Strymon Night Sky, which is a very dark sounding reverb pedal, but at the same time, it's almost like an extended synthesis within the pedal itself. We actually don't have it here today, but the Empress Zoya is another effects pedal that's clearly geared towards modular synthesis. And that is a pedal we'll definitely be exploring later in the series. I've noticed that the guitar to synth move is something that's very common. And so naturally to just transplant your effects that you use on your guitar to synth is something that's very common. Yes, there are definitely some effects pedals that are very expensive, but in the world of synthesis, like modular synths especially, these are actually some of the most affordable options for hardware effects. They're also very portable, and in this case, modular, right? In the sense that I could just move these pedals anywhere I want on this board very easily, they're small. How should you set up and power your pedals? In front of me, I have what I think is the most efficient way to set up this board. Let's go through it. First off, everything is on the Pedal Train XD18, which is solid, super portable. You could just lug this thing around. It actually also comes with a protective case, which is very useful if you're gonna be traveling with these. And you don't have to remove anything from the board in order to put these into the case. 
In this case, I have seven units that are Velcroed down to the board. I could obviously switch these out if I'd like very easily. Note that I am not using one of those single cables with multiple uh, nine volt inputs, mainly because they're just not super reliable. It's really common for one of the inputs on those cables to just like conk out on you and then you have to do process of elimination, figure out which one, rework the entire cable. It's just, it's just messy. This is a much better way of doing it. The Voodoo Lab Pedal Power 3, I've got multiple cables plugged into here and then it's powering this entire uh, rack. It's zero noise, so you don't have to worry about any sort of like ground issues with it. It saves you a lot of time and headache, so in my opinion, it's it's worth it for this sort of thing if you're gonna, if you're gonna go for the real thing. Audio routing is something that we're gonna get into later in this video, but just in terms of cleanliness, I've gone from left to right on this first row, so the slicer into the red panda particle. Instead of going from left to right again, I thought that it was easier to just go right to left because these are closer and then again from left to right. So left to right, right to left, left to right. That was just the cleanest in terms of cable management for me. And this is so useful because we have these rails here, you're able to tuck some of these cables underneath the rails. Once again, it just makes everything look clean. I've made it look as clean as possible here. In the end, once all of this is complete, there's just something satisfying and interesting about having like a fully customizable rack. And depending on the size of your collection, I'm sure that you'll go through, you know, different iterations. You'll switch out pedals and see what combinations you like best. In the end, it's all about what's right for you. What can pedals do? There can obviously be a variety of depth from one pedal to the next. So for example, something like the Boss Slicer SL2. It's a slicer, that's its function. All of your controls are just right there. Just to hear what it sounds like on something like this. I'm actually gonna add a little bit of reverb to this. Right, so we have these rhythms. This is without it. And if we add it, it introduces these like different rhythms. We could change the rhythm here. We could slow down those rhythms or speed them up. Let's speed it up. Give it some more attack. So the rhythms are gonna be a bit more pronounced. Very cool, change it, change that variation. At its core, this is actually a tremolo, but it gets a little bit more complex than that, as you just heard. The intuitiveness of a pedal like the Boss Slicer SL2, it generates like instant fun because it's pretty simple. So it's kind of comparable to like a mini synth with a few knobs, it's just fun. Whereas something like the Eventide H90 is a much more complex device, a dual multi effects pedal that requires a certain learning curve, but that can do a lot more, which we'll be getting into later in the video. Maybe you'd wanna go for a less is more approach and buy more than one pedal. Maris LVX and the Strymon Night Sky represent a different kind of multi effects pedal. We could call them organic because the various effects work together organically, sort of interacting with each other rather than simply being added on top of one another. With some reverb. With the rest. Now just the reverb. Let's get really weird with the delay. Make it sort of like a slappy delay. the kiss looking at LVX by the way I've done a full-on review on this thing if you'd like to check that out you take a look at the screen there's a bunch of different presets on the surface to choose from I think there's like more than 80 actually yep and then in the back you have a bunch of blank presets this is where you could actually build your own effects your own granular effects the easy to access knobs there's feedback there's modulation there's mix as well as delay time and then here depending on the preset that you're using there's different controls so on this particular preset dream fifth this is where you could actually pitch uh the delay also with pedals like LVX, H90, as well as the Night Sky, there's MIDI ports in the back so you could actually sync your tempo 
from your audio source, which works especially well with delay because then it's like tempo locked to whatever tempo you're at, especially with drums. In fact, give me a second. We're gonna take a look at this with the drums just to give you an example. Setup change, so now we're going MIDI into the LVX, daisy chained out into uh, the H90, and then daisy chained again back out into the night sky. So now everything here is tempo synced. So I've chosen a very obvious setting here just to give you an idea of what this sounds like. Here's the drums. That's the preset, clearly tempo synced, like a 16th note type thing. I think it's actually dotted eights. Right, so dotted eighth delay, cool, that's what it sounds like. Along with some reverb. If I wanna mix this in too. This is the type of world that you're stepping into if you're just using one. Uh, complex effects pedal if you combine two of them together it's just like uh explosive what i like to do in this sort of setting is choose a preset that fits with whatever it is that i'm doing and then maybe just tweak things from there and speaking of the mother load of all pedals let's talk about the h90 the big thing about the h90 is that it's algorithm based so it's essentially many many pedals in one in fact there's actually even an algorithm in here that emulates the tricera chorus for example there's a lot of layers to sift through. So if I hit presets, I could actually narrow down the type of algorithm that I wanna work with. So for example, there's band delay, black hole, so many of them, chorus, that's where Tricer Tricera Chorus lives. For now, we're gonna look at mod echo verb. And now only the mod echo verb presets will show up. So ambience, echo space, God. <laughs> but if I go over to parameters, I've got twin pines as well as echo space, God. So twin pines, I'm gonna hit play on my, on my riff. that about a 50%-ish. And then my second effects right here, we could layer this over top. Very, very cool. Bring that to K down maybe, a little bit shorter, smaller. What if I wanna change that to something else though? Planetarium, back to parameters. Planetarium is here. Twin Pines is still there. And why not, we'll go back into effects and add some more effects right here as well. Triple effects. Feeling like Steve Reich right now. On top of this, in terms of audio routing, there's also ins and outs in the back where you're able to use the two effect slots as a totally separate stereo effects in what's called dual mode. We haven't touched these two simpler pedals right here. We have Red Panda Particle, which is varied in its own right, but yet still pretty simple. So there's a blend knob, which is essentially mix. There's also feedback, self-explanatory. There's the delay and pitch of your particles as well. So delay would go for these particular uh, settings right here in the black. And pitch would go for the, the white ones. Very cool. You could go for super short chops, which, which sounds like this. So many particles, or you could slow that down and have just a few particles here and there. Bring up the octave of the particles as well. This is really fun. Depending on the general mix and the instrument that you're running for your effects pedals, you might want it to stay in mono or you might want it to become in stereo. Mono is a simple concept, it's just one audio signal, but what exactly is stereo? It essentially means that there's like an actual difference between the right and left channel. That being said, it completely depends on the instrument that you're using. Some synths will pass completely different sounds or balances from left to right. There's a lot of synths, especially vintage synths, that have a mono signal and only become stereo once you run them through a stereo signal path. So for example, the circuit rhythm, which we were just using is stereo, whereas something like the Novation Bass Station is a monophonic analog bass synth. That being said, it is pretty common to just keep your bass mono because it does sit better in the low end of the mix. 
Of course, it depends on the mix, but it is a common practice. But for example, if you wanted to turn your bass from mono into stereo, you could of course do that through this signal path here. The Tricera chorus is mono in and stereo out. So let's hear this. I have a very classic bass line here. If you wanted to turn the stereo, might not be the right decision for a pedal, but it's stereo now. Same thing with reverb. We're getting a stereo signal on this bass. Mono synths on their own could definitely already sound pretty lush, but when you run them through a stereo signal, especially a stereo effects pedal, it just takes them to the next level. And this is where a classic or modern synth could really take on the characteristics of the effects pedal that you're running them through. So in terms of mono versus stereo, if you really do want to get deep on it, whatever synth that you're interested in or that you own, just make sure to take a look at how the signal is split between left and right, because like I said, it's different for all of them. In terms of ordering the audio signal of my pedals, I've ordered them in a very specific way. So up here, these are both fully mono, so mono in, mono out out. After that, I'm going to the Tricera Chorus, which is mono in, stereo out. And then from the rest of the way, it's fully stereo in, fully stereo out. It's just a lot more organized like this. If I want to skip all of the mono effects, I could just go ahead and do that. So yeah, to me, this is the best approach and just a general understanding of mono versus stereo. And now let's talk about effect order. On this particular board, we don't have any distortion or fuzz pedals, which you would put at the beginning of your chain. Then you might wanna place other normally mono pedals, like maybe filters, and then modulation and time-based effects like reverb and delay, which could either be mono or stereo. That being said, that's obviously just a guideline. There's no rigid rules follow what your ears tell you depending on your setup. So obviously going through iterations and figuring out what setup works for you as opposed to having to constantly reorder things, that definitely makes things easier. As you can see, there's a lot to this setup. So you want it to be streamlined and simple. Otherwise you're, you might just be discouraged from starting at all. Now we're gonna take a look at audio routing using a mixer. So I've got the model 1.4 here in the middle and I'm using this entire effects chain as a send for the track coming in from the Novation circuit rhythm. Right now, the only thing that's activated is LVX. Let's hear this. I'm gonna send it to this track. So you can see there's some, some pitch going on there. Add bass. One, two, three, bass. The next thing we'll look at is Night Sky and try to get it to sound a bit more like a distortion pedal. It does have like a drive uh, parameter right here. And by the way, I've actually done a full video on the Night Sky as well. Check that out. So the Shimmer, I've also messed with this as well. It's at a perfect fifth below. And we're getting a, like a tiny bit of drive. It's, you can't really hear it as an effect send. Let's try adding the other drums. Whoa, a bit less of this, it's a bit much. So this is with no send at all, it's very clean. Right, so this is about as close as we could get to like a distortion sort of drive thing. Just the drums and bass. What if we really mess with this and we just threw on some particles? Whoa. Yeah, it sounds pretty cool. Right, so we're getting into uh, some experimental territory. And if we want, we could actually just solo the effects in to really hear what we're adding here. EQ it. Two, three, eh. Insane. Going back to the notion of routing, it's simple enough, but I wanted to bring up input and line levels, as well as studio grade versus non-studio grade effects pedals. Studio grade is essentially a buzzword that builders use to indicate 
that their pedal can be used as an outboard studio effects and sent as a send through, let's say, a mixer like the Model 1.4. Does this mean that non-studio grade pedals can't be used in this way? Well, of course they can, but they're more likely to distort because they're not compatible with line level outputs, which are louder than guitar outputs. In fact, it's likely that its send level will be too low. And when you boost it, that's when you're gonna hear unwanted distortion. The word studio grade is not really that important. What's important is that you make sure that the pedals that you buy are compatible with the louder output of a synth, because yes, it's much louder. And so that's called line level compatibility. So we just use this as an effect sim. We could of course use it as a master effects as well, like we've been doing for the rest of this video. Just plug directly into your pedal chain and voila, but you knew that. Levels between pedals are another important aspect of working with effects pedals, especially when you're chaining multiple effects together. But before getting into that, let's talk about today's sponsor, DistroKid. Are you looking for ways to distribute your own music? You can do it now using DistroKid. There is a discount linked in the description of this video, which I encourage you to use. It's just over $20 a year to release unlimited music to all major streaming platforms. The thing that makes DistroKid amazing for independent artists is just the sheer amount of free promotional tools that they offer us. There is now a DistroKid iOS app so you can check out your stats and information on your smartphone. Personally, one of my favorite free promotional tools is HyperFollow, which is essentially a free link and bio link. I've been using it for years now to lead people to specific pages and help fund what it is that I do. And you could claim as many hyperfollow pages as you'd like free of charge. Just over $20 a year to release unlimited music, you keep 100% of your streaming earnings as well, which is another great deal. If you're an independent artist, to me, it's just a no brainer. Join the team. There's over 1 million users using DistroKid. So yeah, join us. When you have multiple effects plugged into each other, it's easy to get unwanted distortion due to excessive output, even with line level compatible pedals. The easy and simple solution here is to just start with a lower level on your synth or groove box or whatever. Then just go easy on the gain and level knobs on any other pedal in the chain. The goal is to not overload the input on the next pedal in the chain. A distortion or fuzz pedal will create saturation internally, but their output is often designed to push a lot of volume for the guitar amp, which is built to withstand it. You definitely do not want to send that same level into another pedal or you're just gonna get some weird clipping. If you're using a mixer, you could just use it to adjust your send and return levels. Ultimately, I would suggest to keep all of your line input and output levels like moderate so that you don't run into any issues like this and adjust the amount of each effect using their own mix knob, which balances dry and wet signals. Some pedals like the Night Sky actually have a dry signal and a separate reverb signal. So this could get pretty hot if you blast both of them. Obviously just use your ears, take your time to get to know your gear and eventually you're gonna land on something that you really like. And that's it for today's video. This was like an enormous setup for me. I've never had this much gear in one video. So yeah, <laughs> how did I do? Affiliate links are linked in the description. Go with Sweetwater if you are in North America. Really do appreciate you guys being here. There's tons of pedal related content coming in the next few months. Again, this is in combination with Delicious Audio. Super happy to have the opportunity to, to work with this. Hope to see you in the next video.